Good morning. And welcome to all of us here gathered at the First Presbyterian Church here in Newton, New Jersey, and also those worshiping with us on our YouTube channel. The information for this service can also be found on our website, which is www.fpcnewtonnj.org. I know some of you are bringing the uh, bulletin with you on a, a, a phone or a, a device, and that's great too. We also have copies in hard copy as well. Lots going on today. Uh, welcome and, and congratulations to all the dads who are here for Father's Day. Welcome and congratulations to all our grads who are here as well. It's delightful to have this opportunity. After the service, we will have uh, out on the punch in the patio, out in the front of the patio. Hope you can stay for that time of fellowship and uh, reconnecting with one another. But now, brothers and sisters, let us throw our hearts and minds together for this time of worship and praise.
But in truth, we are in constant need of grace. In penitence and faith, let us confess our weakness to God and to one another. Please join me as we share in the unison prayer of confession. It is followed by a time of silent prayer. Let us pray. Most merciful God, forgive us. We, we imagine that we can live without you when you give us our very breath. We seek control over others rather than strive to live in unity. We allow fear to overtake us, even though our lives are in your hands. Draw us back into your steadfast love and shape us into the likeness of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Holy God, these are our prayers of confession. We humbly seek your forgiveness and grace. May we know the peace that is ours through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. And let the people say, Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers, the good news is this. Grace is poured out like water. Mercy flows like a never-ending stream, bathing us in goodness and love. Live then as those who have received new life, rejoicing in your baptism. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God has broken down the dividing walls between us and has bridged whatever distance separates us from God and one another. Peace be with you. And, God and also you. with you. Thank you. Please take a moment to greet one another from a distance. Listen for God's word, read and proclaim. Let us ask God's spirit to guide us, to guide those who speak and those who hear. Please join me in the prayer for illumination as together we pray. God, God of eternity, eternity, by the power of your spirit, speak your word to us this day, that hearing we may know your truth and live ever more faithfully for you. In Jesus' name. Responsive reading is Psalm 9, verses 9 through 20. Let us share God's word. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare his deeds among the peoples. For he will avenge his blood and his mind of them. He does yes. not forget the cry of the afflicted. Be gracious to me, O Lord. See what I suffer from those who hate me. You are the one who lifts me up from the gates of death. So that I may recount all your praises, and in the gates of all your time, rejoice in your deliverance. The nations have sunk in the pit that they made, in the net that they hid, has their own foot been caught? The Lord has made himself known. He has executed judgment. The wicked are snared in the work of their own hands. The wicked shall depart to show all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor perish forever. Rise up, O Lord. Do not let mortal prevail. Let the nations be judged before you. Put them in fear, O Lord. Let the nations know that they are only you. Good morning, all God's children. I am Mrs. Duffy, and welcome to our time with children. Wow, today is such a special day. Not only is it Father's Day, and happy Father's Day to all you dads and granddads and stepdads and uncles and all the men in our lives that nurture us and care for us and guide us and, and love us. <laughs> Keep going. This is all 
also the day that we celebrate our graduates here, those graduating from high school as well as those graduating from college. Now, high school graduates, I have a special favor to ask of you this morning. I'm kind of hoping that you might come up here and join me like you used to do when you were children for one last time up here. You're making my day. <laughs> and if you happen to be wearing a dress or skirt, feel free to sit on, on one of the benches. You can just have a seat and, oh come on, I used to sit on the floor and I could get up, you can do it. <laughs> now for those of you that are graduating, this is an extra special summer for you. You may be getting a job after graduation or heading off to college or trade school, but whatever you are doing, it will be a new experience for you. And sometimes these new experiences can be kind of scary. So we worry about things all the time, right? We worry, will, will I do the right thing? Am I smart enough? Will I make new friends wherever I go? Did I choose the right school, the right major, the right job? But the good news is this, that we do not need to fear. No matter where we go or what we are doing, God goes with us. Now our Bible story today is the story of David and Goliath. And I'm sure you all remember this story from childhood. Goliath was a Philistine, and the Philistines lived along the Mediterranean coast just west of the nation of Israel. And they continually raided the Israelites' territory, trying to take their land away. Now the Philistines had a lot of advantages over the Israelites, but during this one encounter, their big advantage was the giant Goliath. Now the Bible tells us that Goliath was over nine feet tall, and not only was he huge, but the armor that he wore protected him from almost anything that could come to harm him. Now this story is truly a story of contrast. On one hand, we have Goliath. He was an experienced warrior. And then we have David. He was a shepherd. Goliath was huge. David was small. He was just a boy. The giant wore armor. David refused armor. Goliath, he carried a sword and a shield and a spear. David carried a slingshot and five stones. Goliath, he laughed at the God of Israel, and David trusted in the God of his fathers. And so we all know the rest of the story. David kills Goliath, making it look so easy with that slingshot and the stone and that skillful aim. Goliath is dead, and the Israelites win the day. Well, as you head off to a new job or to college or to some other type of training, remember there are plenty of modern day giants out there. Giants like peer pressure or self-doubt or fear of doing something new or fear of failure. These giants may seem too big for you to handle by yourself, but they are not. We can believe that God is with us, just as David believed that God was with him when he battled Goliath. Maybe we're, uh, we alone are not strong enough to defeat the Goliaths in our lives, but we are not alone because God goes with us. When we hear this story, we often admire David's heroic courage, and sometimes we forget that it was the God of Israel who enabled David to overcome Goliath. This is the same God who is with us today, the same God that is with you and that goes with you. And when we trust God, God can enable us to overcome giants as well. So know this as you head out on this next, next big adventure that we, all of us here, are praying for you and that you do not go alone, that God goes with you. Now for our children today, our activity, you can play a game of David and Goliath, and it's very simple. Just find five small stones, flat stones, and one larger stone. Your larger stone will be Goliath. 
You can paint those if you want with some acrylic paint. And while they dry, take a piece of chalk and draw a big square on a sidewalk with an X in the middle. And then each player takes a turn sliding their small rocks into the square. And the first one to knock out the big Goliath rock wins the game. Now be sure to slide your uh, rocks and not to throw them so that no one will injure us. So let's pray. Gracious God, help me to trust that you are with me, especially when I'm afraid of facing giants. Amen. Thank you so much for coming up here. Thank you, Colleen. Well, today's scripture lesson is this famous story of David and Goliath. It's found in 1 Samuel chapter 17. The chapter goes on and on and on, and I, believe it or not, have cut this story down, but it still goes for quite a while in the worship guide in front of you. But it's too good a story not to read. So let's continue to listen to God's word. Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle. They were gathered at Succo, which belongs to Judah, and encamped between Succo and Azekah in Ephesh Damim. Saul and the Israelites gathered and encamped in the Valley of Elah and formed ranks against the Philistines. The Philistines stood on the mountain on one side, and the Israelites stood on the mountain on the other side with a valley between them. And there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath, who was over nine feet tall. He had a helmet of bronze on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. The weight of the coat of mail was about 150 pounds. He had greaves of bronze on his legs, and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed about 15 pounds of iron, and his shield-bearer went before him. Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves, and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, Today I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all the Israelites heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. For forty days the Philistine came forward and took his stand morning and evening. Jesse said to his son David, Take for your brothers an ephah of this parched grain and these ten loaves and carry them quickly to the camp to your brothers. Also take these ten cheeses to the commander of their thousand. See how your brothers fare and bring some token from them. Now Saul and David's brothers and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. David rose early in the morning, left the sheep of the keeper, took the provisions, and went as Jesse had commanded him. He came to the encampment as the army was going forth to the battle line, shouting a war cry. Israel, Israel and the Philistines drew up for battle, army against army. David left the things in charge of the keeper of the baggage, ran to the ranks, and greeted his brothers. And as he talked with them, the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, came out of the ranks of the Philistines and spoke the same words as before. And when David heard, and David heard him, David said to the men who stood by him, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God. When the words that David spoke were heard, they repeated them before Saul. And Saul sent for David. David said to Saul, Let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Saul said to David, You're not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For you're just a boy. 
And he has been a man of war since his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father, and whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it, and I struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw, strike it down, and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, The Lord, who saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, will save me from the hand of this Philistine. So Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Saul then clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. David strapped Saul's sword over the armor, and he tried in vain to walk, for he was not used to them. Then Saul said, David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I am not used to them. So David removed them. Then he took a staff in his hand, and he chose five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in his shepherd's bag in the pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came on and drew near to David with his sheer shield-bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog? that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, You come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head, and I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air and the wild animals of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. When the Philistine drew nearer to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. He put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, striking down the Philistine and killing him. There was no sword in David's hand. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine. He grasped his sword, drew it out of its sheath, and killed him. And he cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. The troops of Israel and Judah rose up with a shout and pursued the Philistines as far as Gath and the gates of Ekron, so that the wounded Philistines fell on the way from Sha'arim as far as Gath and Ekron. The Philistines, the Israelites, excuse me, the Israelites came back from chasing the Philistines, and they plundered their camp. David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put Goliath's armor in his tent. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, in today's famous story, David the shepherd boy is surrounded by men of war and armaments and machinery of warfare, all designed for one purpose, and that is to defeat the enemy and gain victory. Goliath and Saul, they knew what it took. They knew what worked for them. And it's rather incomprehensible for them to think that anybody could go to war without having all the accoutrements 
of modern day for them, modern day warfare. One of my favorite authors, Fred Beekner, describes Goliath, and after he's put on all this stuff, and you've heard the weight of it, 150 pounds of mail and this spear and all this stuff, and uh, Fred Beekner says, he looked like a Sherman tank, <laughs> ready to go to war. Well, for his part, David draws on his personal history to tell Saul of his encounter with lions and bears and his absolute confidence in the Lord's ability to save. Saul's impressed, and he says, go, and may the Lord be with you. But no sooner are those words out of Saul's mouth than you may have noticed that Saul signals his armor bearers to dress David up in the best armaments that royalty could provide. I guess having the Lord with you is one thing, but having good equipment is essential. Or maybe this is a clue to us that Saul maybe is not 100% willing to trust in God's power to save. You know, there is a lot of humor hidden in the Bible, and often not so hidden. This picture of David being weighed down bit by bit with Saul's armor, finally strapping on the sword, which must have dropped you know, in the ground behind him, and then trying to make his way, is one of those pictures in my mind that you can't help but read that or hear it and just go and just sort of chuckle. It's a funny scene, but it also says a lot about David. He was willing to try on the armor. He didn't just dismiss it out of hand. He had to prove to the king that it just wouldn't work for him, which actually was probably a safer course of action than just telling the, the king, no, I'm not going to do what you just commanded me to do. And so after David proves his point with this visual illustration of the absurdity of it all, David then could say no, and return to his tried and true technique with a sling and a stone. He wasn't going to try to hide his youth or his inexperience behind a coat of armor that belonged to somebody else. He had tried on Saul's armor, but it just wasn't right for him. He had the courage to stand tall without the security of the weapons of war. All he had was a staff and a slingshot, and that was enough because they also had the presence of the living God. Clearly, one size does not fit all. Your way of being the best version of the person that God created you to be will be unique to you and to your experience. Each of us has to ask ourselves, what is Saul's armor for us? What will we have the humility to be willing to try on? What will we have the wisdom to keep on and hang on to? And what are we going to have the good sense to let go of? And these are questions that arise at different points in life, many different points along life's journey. And for our graduates in particular, but for all of us, don't think that the answers that you arrive, arrived at today are somehow chiseled in stone. Rather, they're like the pictures that your family and friends have taken of your graduation. Wonderful pictures, I'm sure. Pictures that record an important milestone. But like all milestones, they merely say, you've come this far in the journey. And the road continues over toward the horizon. And on we go, bit by bit, day by day. Well, there are other things in this David and Goliath story that can guide us from this day forward as the journey continues. For instance, David spent several years doing what most people would regard as rather menial tasks. In his case, case shepherding sheep. It wasn't a glitzy assignment. He didn't have a smartphone to occupy his time. He had to keep an eye out on his surroundings. He had to learn how to read the weather, how to know when predators were lurking. Learn to trust in the Lord and to remember his own story, his own history, and to draw strength and courage from his past. 
I dare say maybe it was it was his experience tending sheep and his day-to-day -day reliance upon God that gave him the wisdom and the faith to say in the words of Psalm 23, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God, you're even there with me. Therefore, I will not fear. Well, this kind of faith confidence comes from practicing reliance upon God. And it's not relying upon God in that kind of a casual, well, via con Dios, you know, go with God sort of way. It's, it seems like that's what Saul was doing. Goodbye and good luck is what he seemed to say to David. But rather, this God be with you in all your undertakings, in all life's adventures, gives that sense of practice of that faith perspective, that faith confidence. Through come what may, through life's perils and through life's places of peace, through our achievements and also those small acts that we do along the way, taken together, each has a part to play in bringing us to this time of, of graduation and commencement, new beginnings. And God has been with you. And God will be with you through thick and thin when you're confronting and killing your own particular Goliaths. And when you're just killing time, waiting for the next big thing to come along. Remember also that David spent time honing his craft. He didn't just pick up a slingshot one day and spoil around his head and hit the bear smack dab in the middle of the forehead. It took practice. It took experimentation. Why choose a smooth stone instead of a jagged one? Wouldn't a jagged one do more damage? Which tools did he need to get him where he needed to go? We had a visual illustration of my next point, which was to say, why choose five stones and not just one? If he truly believed in God's ability to save, one should have been enough, right? How many thank you for the oral and visual illustration, the fact that it's good to have backup, right? It's good to have something with us. And I think to that point, we should also add that in addition to his trust in God, David also knew that cockiness is not next to godliness. Trusting God is always a good idea. And leaving room to acknowledge one's own humanity and one's failings, and having in addition to stone A to have stone B, C, D, and E on hand, that's a good idea too. And maybe the last thing about, to say about David is that he knew, he only knew who he was, he knew who he wasn't. He wasn't Saul. He wasn't Goliath. He made his own way. And so to each one of us, unique, precious in God's sight, and the same God who created us and who has loved us since before we were born is still the same God who journeys with us whether we're aware of it or not. I especially love one of the old stories attributed to one of the rabbis who was thinking about his own life, and he said, you know, I think when I get to the pearly gates, God is not going to ask me why was I not more like Moses, or more like Elijah, or more like one of the other, you know, giants in the faith and those folks who come out of the pages of the scripture at us. He says, I'm quite sure God's going to ask me why wasn't I more like the person that God created me to be? And so we work ourselves into being the best version of ourselves that we can be. And my hope and, and prayer for each of us is that we will always be about that business of becoming the best version of this unique person that God has created us to be. And to know that along the way, you have a cheering section right here. You have a cheering section in heaven. And, and Paul talks about that, and the saints triumphant, just willing us over the finish line and cheering us at every step of the way. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, some of whom are right here in this room. Thanks be to God, and let us pray.
Oh Lord God, as we deal with our fears, as we try to build upon our faith, as we develop our skills and the God-given gifts that you have bestowed upon us, help us to count it all joy. For Jesus' sake. And let God's people say, Amen. Well, friends, I invite you to rise in body or in spirit. We're going to sing two, twice through, You Are My Hiding Place. some announcements attached to today's worship guide. Also, the newsletter for July will be coming out shortly, detailing some of the other things that are going on in the life of the church. And uh, if you have any questions about what's going on, by all means, uh, pick up the phone or send an email or I don't do Twitter or those other things, but hey, you know, I'm sure there's some way that we all can get together. Uh, and so uh, if there's any question you have, please, by all means, uh, let that be known. At this time, however, I'm going to invite um, members of our deacons board to come forward, along with the graduates are here that, well, we reinstated, of course, now that we're back in the sanctuary, we reinstated our cleaning crew. They're doing a fabulous job, including taking all the dots off the floor, which were physically distant spots for you graduates to come. But come on down and just kind of in a broad uh, half circle face in the congregation. And Liz and Jody are also coming forward. I'm so glad that we can all be here today. I know not all of the graduates are able to be here going to jobs and other, other things. So those who are here, we're great to have you with us. So you're just going to kind of come in a broad semicircle there and face out that way. You, Liz. Good morning. My name is Liz Fusco, and I am honored to be here this morning representing the Board of Deacons as we present our high school graduates each with a $250 scholarship. These scholarships are made possible by the generosity of our whole congregation, as you have supported us in our fundraising efforts this year, including our annual cookie sale, 
our fall chili takeout, and our spring clothing drive, and others over the years. Thank you all for your contributions and making this wonderful ministry possible. I'd like to recognize each of the graduates and thank those that could be here today. When I call your name, please step forward. Mrs. McNulty will give you your card, but unfortunately we'll skip the handshake or the embrace this year. Yeah. First, Daniel Cleary. And Skylar Conklin, both of whom couldn't be here today. Amanda Gorisak, as well as Abigail Gormley. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the list gets a little bit better. <laughs> James Howe. Stephen Howe. Jacob Jones. Lacey Cummins Jones. Alyssa Lasko. Rebecca McNulty. And Shane Snelling. Congratulations to these graduates as well as our um, two college grads, Elizabeth Public and Afton Gorisak. We are proud of all of you. We can't wait to see what God has in store for you in the future. And we hope that you will stay to celebrate further as we have um, punch on the patio and a little more of a celebration planned for you, as well as the fathers and father figures here with us today. So if we can, please, put both hands together. <laughs> and let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for all the events, our history, for everything that we have experienced, for the ways in which you have watched over these young people and their families, guiding them to this time of celebration and marking of amazing achievements. We know, oh God, that as you have been with them every step of the way, so you will continue to watch over them, blessing them, and guiding them. So may the future open up in a beautiful way for each one of them and for all of us as together we give you the thanks and praise for what you have made possible for us in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whose name we pray. And let everyone say, Amen. Amen. Once again, thank you all, and you may be seated. Thank you, Lord. financial contributions to this congregation come from sacrifice and hard work. We are so grateful for this and commit together to ensure the funds that we gather collectively do a greater good for ourselves and for the world than we could have done alone. Um, you may have noticed uh, we are not sending ushers out into the congregation to collect offering, however we will find offering plates uh, as you exit the buildings today. So may this offering help to sustain and grow the life and mission of this congregation. May we give in love and in hope. Please join me as we sing, or please rise in body and spirit and join me as we sing the doxology.
As we come to the time of our morning prayers, uh, you'll note um, the prayer list that gets sent out every week uh, via email. And uh, again, since we are continuing with our YouTube um, uh, taping of these services, as we have been doing, doing now since last March, um, it's been our practice not to um, have you uh, mentioning joys and concerns verbally from, from the pew, uh, and neither are we using those prayer cards that were in the pews as well. Doesn't mean we don't want to hear. So, uh, as I said on other occasions, my crystal ball is still in the shop, so I need your help. So, uh, whether it's updates to the existing list or uh, additions to that, or with joy being able to say prayers have been answered, we can remove someone from the list, those are things that be very good to know. We have, uh, however, in addition to the printed list, um, Two notes of, of sadness and of loss. First, for the family and friends of Jonathan Fett, one of our would have been graduates who died last Sunday in a car accident. Such a tragic event. And then the Muirs are asking for prayers for a family from their former church down in Mendham Hilltop, Presbyterian Church, Renee, who died unexpectedly, uh, leaving wife Jennifer and family as well. So our prayers for them in this time of grief and of loss. Not to mention, of course, the now more than 600 and some thousand who have died from COVID and the families, loved ones, friends, communities, graduating classes, go down the list of all those folks who are impacted by this devastating disease. And we pray very soon to get it under better control than it is now. But signs of hope along the way are the fact that we're gathered here. Even though you are masked, and I thank you for continuing to do that. We're not the vaccine police, and so we know there are some folks here who are not vaxxed for any number of reasons. And so just for the safety of all, worship leaders myself, I think, are distanced enough. Um, but for you to continue to wear your masks is a way of showing what does it mean to love my neighbor as myself. So thank you. Well, friends, as we come to this time of morning prayer, I invite you to join in prayer with me and then join the path in the, in the Lord's Prayer, which you'll find in the worship guide. O Lord God of the sea and the sky, your world brims over with glory. You've set us in the midst of a garden and trusted us in its tending. We do pray, O oh God, for our good earth and for the wisdom to care for it well, that generations may come to enjoy its fruits and to revel in its beauty. Lord, you are the God of the earthquake and of the storm, and yes, this beautiful world is also full of danger. So we would pray that you would keep watch over your people, save us from despair, strengthen and uphold us when trouble comes. As parts of our own country are baking under unrelenting heat, while other parts are drowning with incessant rain. Give relief, O oh God, to all your people. O oh Lord, you are the God of power and might. We know that the rulers of this world do not always seek your wisdom. So we pray that you would guide all nations in the ways of peace and uphold the oppressed, even as we work and wait for your coming realm. God of liberation, we thank you for your grace and redeeming love. And this weekend we commemorate with joy and thanksgiving the shouts of enslaved people in Texas who at last heard a declaration of freedom. Amid the celebration of liberation over 150 years ago, we pray for change. Hear the cries of those still enslaved throughout the world. We still encounter you in the faces of those whom society has pushed to the margins. So guide us, O oh God, through the love that you revealed through Jesus Christ to establish justice so that all may dwell in harmony and peace. Fathering God, we thank you for, for
for our fathers, for stepfathers, for grandfathers, for uncles and cousins, for all those teachers and mentors and neighbors and friends, all who have been a guide to us along the way, those who have been fathers to us in so many ways, may they know our gratitude and our love as we share this day of celebration. O oh God of healing and of comfort, pain and loss are all around us. We pray that you would soothe the frantic, embolden the fearful, ease the suffering of the sick, give peace to all who grieve, and hope to those who are facing death. With trust in your sustaining spirit, with thanksgiving for your son's intercessions, with confidence in your coming realm of justice, peace, and love, we offer our prayers this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I invite you once again to rise in body or in spirit, and remain standing then to the end of the service. We'll sing twice through. continuing training up of us into righteousness, to gift us with peace, to remind us that though things sometimes don't seem to be the way they ought to be, God is still in charge. We can put our trust in the Lord. God will guide us each and every day. And friends, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the abiding presence of God's Holy Spirit may rest upon us today and evermore. And let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Amen.